Okay, this is the uh, February 2nd meeting of the East Long Meadow Board of Assessors. It's 4.30 on, on uh, Tuesday. Um, is there anyone recording this meeting other than LCAT and our own re recording device for, for our minutes? No, there is none. Um, so the first item on the agenda is to review the open and executive session minutes from the meeting of January 19th, 2016. Mr. Chairman, I've read both uh, sets of minutes, the ones from the open session and the executive session, found them to be in order, and I move that they be accepted as presented. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. We have to review and sign certain reports. There's the 2016 abatement application report inclusive of real estate abatements. The total amount of is $9,366.66 plus a small amount for the CPA. Bill, I have added one item to the agenda, I believe, so you may want to just follow that. Okay. I added a uh, motor vehicle excise commitment. Yeah, that's on the computer. Okay, the motor vehicle excise abatement report for the month of January is as follows. Um, for, for fiscal year 2014, the amount of, uh, 1, 000, of uh, just $1.77. 2015, in the amount of $1,191.77, and total of uh, $1,243.54. These, these are, these are the um, motor vehicle abatements for things like cars that were disposed of or, or sold or moved out of state. And then we have the final 2015 recapitulation of commitments. This is for motor vehicle excise. Correct. I should have handed you that one before the recapitulation because that is a 2015, which is on that sheet you just signed. Yes. Okay. Review and sign the 2015 motor vehicle excise commitment number eight in the amount of $3,582.23. This is mostly for cars that were recently purchased. Correct. $2.2 million last year. That's substantial. And then we review and sign the 2016 motor vehicle excise commitment number one in the amount of $1,734,135. This sounds like everybody's getting a bill. This is the very first commitment for 2015. <laughs> it will not be going out uh, for about another two, two to three weeks. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But it did, we were able to get everything processed and the numbers on there. And commitment number one is always the big one. Yeah, that's substantial. Now we have a, a Department of Local Services certification preparation workshop scheduled on March 16th, uh, 2016 from 10 to 12 in the morning. And that is on your uh, files. I uh, don't know if anyone has an interest in going. They do give credits generally if anyone is in need of um, continuing education credits. We do not have a recertification, but as I've mentioned to Bill in the past, I've gone on an annual basis because as they start changing things, one year you need to know what they're changing so you're prepared you can start addressing those changes to be prepared yeah we definitely want year. you to go to um when's our next to, to, uh, to keep up with that 18? material fiscal 18 is unless the law changes unless the law changes um i have a feeling that if the law does change they're going to be keeping people on uh, they're going to the current probably, schedule yeah and, and they're then probably just shift people a little bit so they can get i phase all, it in yeah yeah so I'm still preparing for fiscal 18 okay. as our, 
So if anyone does have um, a desire to go, please let me know and I will make sure I get you registered. And as mm. Bill and I had spoke, uh, did you say you were I would going? Like, I would like to go to this one. But you also said you were not going to be able to make the MAAO one out in Randolph. No, I can't. There was it's another Wednesday. commitment. It's Wednesday, okay. and I have another commitment. Okay. I just want to make a note of that. I don't want to. So, Bill, you would like to go to the um, workshop on March 16th on the see what the DLS certification okay. issues are this year. Okay. And Chris, you can let me know if you. I, I'm thinking about it simply because it's a good way to earn credits mm -hmm. and uh, two credits and there's yep. minimal travel and yeah. cost. Even if you're a former president, you have to get your you have to get your credits, <laughs> yes, you education do. credits to keep your credentials. Well, and they remind you too. <laughs> the very nice thing is they do not charge us to attend the workshops. Right. So that is that's a free one. <coughs> yes, that's wonderful. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we have local aid estimates on uh, for fiscal year 17. <coughs> quite similar to what we got in fiscal year 16. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be too much change, does there? No. And a little bit small increase in the um, charges against the local aid. But as we know and we've stated over and over every time that a new budget comes out, we always say that until they actually have final vote, yeah. um, everything Usually is Usually in the month the of June, yes. so this is like yes. the, the first salvo of, of yeah, this the is the first cut process. In something which is <laughs> okay. Mr. Grudgeon has just arrived, mm -hmm. ah. so we'll... Yeah. So I'm to take a two-minute break. Could we take, could, could we take a break for, until to have Mr. Grudgeon settle in for the rest of the agenda? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Mr. Grudgeon is here and we have and has signed those, the forms that we signed earlier. And now we go to the, to the seventh item on the agenda, which is the administrative clerk uh, vacancy. Chris, would you begin this discussion? Well, we, we have uh, received several um, applications. Uh, many are well qualified and I would propose that uh, Diane and I work on them and then perhaps bring the most outstanding candidates to the board for review and a vote. I believe we have 16 or 17 all together yes. and we'd like to bring it down to a number of five or six. Uh, what do you mean work on them? Just review them, compare um, experience, qualifications, and so forth. Uh, read the resumes thoroughly. I read them on, uh, you know, as yeah. uh, Diane has sent them. But um, I will. So that would be my proposal. But I don't know if the board wants to do that. I will share with the board that out of the um, applications that we received, there were five who had direct assessing background. There were two more with um, municipal well, three more with municipal experience, one with real estate background, and one with appraising background. So we have, you know, as Chris said, a group of very good candidates, but... Yeah, it's unbelievable, the candidates. Yeah. So we don't want to have to start going through all of these when we can whittle down to the ones that maybe has a assessing municipal and appraising background. Yeah. And yeah, the prior incumbent was very had a, had a lot of experience in this office and with the particular problems of a, of a municipal assessor's office. Mm -hmm. And the new incumbent uh, would be expected to have that, have that kind of experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the the present candidates um, had you know should be protected for, by privacy. Yeah. You know, so that uh, their current employers don't hear it. However, when we get to the stage of picking the ones that we feel are serious candidates and qualified for what we need, then as they're, if you want to interview them, 
before the camera, although I don't believe that we need to do that because it's not a department head position. It's just a support position. I shouldn't say just, it is a support position. So I think that's something that we need to, uh, Diane and I will discuss and then get back to you gentlemen. It's, yeah, we have, that's actually, acceptable. Actually, we did, um, we did do it before the camera with the department head, but I, I, yes. I, I don't think that should be done with every. Yeah, and other departments don't do it. So uh, I think precedent has been set in that regard. Uh, and just so the board is aware that on your latest files, I have numbered all of the candidates in case if anyone did want to um, discuss a certain candidate or certain candidates, um, we could go by using a number rather than a name at this point. I think that's a fair approach. Uh, and just so the board is aware, Candidates number 9, 11, 13, 14, and 16 all have a current assessing background. Okay. Okay. Hey, Chris, we expect that you and the director will um, pursue this. Yes. It's your pleasure. Okay, we have correspondence from the Board of Selectmen on the old fire station. Any comment on this? I have not looked at that. Uh, it, this we don't could, need it, do we? I was going to say this could be a little outdated for our board at this time, juncture in time, um, because they are, were looking to make some decisions. Unsure if they have, but I wanted the board to be aware. Generally, we are not looking for real estate for our personal uses. Uh, or assessing uses, so I didn't think that was. Oh no, we definitely don't need. I don't know what's happening with this you laptop, lost it but again? I lost the correspondence file. I didn't lose the. Oh, huh. you got it back for me. How'd you do that? Okay. We couldn't even Diane couldn't get it back before. I'm a genius. <laughs> you are. I wouldn't go that far. Me neither. <laughs> so yes, we. With the old fire station, like I said, it's not something that the Nothing assessors, right? Yeah. Okay, so they're just asking who needs the space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, th then we have an, uh, um, the deadline for the boards, commissions, and departments to submit warrant articles for the annual town meeting is Tuesday, March 1, 2016 and at 4 p.m. And I'm not aware of a warrant article unless the board is from our department. Um, my only concern is that money for the mapping. Right. And we discussed that with the uh, Appropriations Committee. Mm -hmm. They seemed receptive to the idea. Um, and from what I understand, that the town accountant may know how to mm -hmm. fund it. So um, I would check with her mm -hmm. in a week or two. And if it is not, a, been a topic of decision by the Appropriations Committee. Perhaps we should submit a warrant article just to protect, protect, us. protect the funds. Um, just so the board is updated, the day after our appropriations meeting, I was um, informed that our original budget has been approved. The supplemental, which is where the mapping budget would be falling in, has been held off until they actually meet with a couple other departments who are also involved in the mapping. Okay. One key component naturally would be the DPW, which is where this mapping originally took place right. from. So they know it's a, 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 a necessary need. Mm -hmm. They are going to fund it. They don't know where it's going to be funded. All right, since they feel that way, there may yeah. be no need for a warrant right. article. But I will have something ready if in the event that um, we find we hear different. I believe um, within this week or next week, they're supposed to be meeting with the last of the departments okay. that it's going to affect. So we'll know in, in a timely way. Right. Yeah, so in the, in the event the appropriation committee decides to do it by a warrant article, we can move very quickly. Yeah. Right, right. Now we have uh, planning board decisions you know, four planning board decisions. Anyone of those have impact on this board? 
Uh, we have two new businesses, so naturally we'll be picking up any personal property associated, one home office, and the fourth one being a sign, which will be picked up when we do building permits. Okay, mm -hmm. is there any old business or new business? I have none. Nope, none me neither. Okay, then we need to, uh, and the, the meeting should go into executive session at this point. The subject are 2009 motor vehicle abat abatement applications. We have some statutory exemptions such as veterans exemptions that are pending. We, the, the abatement deadline was, um, it has passed and we have to um, review some of the abatement applications. And then there are some uh, contracts with, our consult with consultants. Um, if we go into, into executive session for these purposes, uh, we will not be returning to, ex to um, open session. Uh, this requires a roll call vote. Um, Ms. Zellner? Yes. Mr. Grudgeon? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Yes. <laughs>